Hey guys, I'm back and we have a brand new product from Olight. And it's always a good day when we've got a new Olight to play with. So we're looking at the M2R Pro Warrior. This is released officially to the world on the 24th. So that is uh, two days from the date I'm making this video. I just got my hands on it. They just sent it to me. I'm excited. This is um, handheld hat mountable and I'll show you another cool accessory that they sent me for it in a moment. Yeah. There is a, as always, you know, when Olight comes out with a new thing, they like to get it in people's hands. So they always start with a cool sale. Don't mind that. That's courtesy of the U.S. Postal Service, as is that. Um, there's going to be a big um, flash sale with bundles and everything on Halloween on October 31st. We'll talk about that as we go through this. But I can tell you that um, there's a black version, there's a camouflage version, and two accessories that you can get in a bundle. But let's start off with this light, which max of 1800 lumens, 300 meters throw, and here's specs. So I can just put that right on there now. Everybody get a good look? Yeah, cool. All right. Aw, thank you for being part of the Olight family. So the old magnetic box, which is great for long-term storage. We've got the accessory box and uh, tack pouch. You know, if this is how you choose to carry, so it has the clip, obviously, but if you choose to carry it in the pouch, so you clip it to it. Um, Capable, uh, capable, sorry, compatible with your Molly type gear, um, all different pals webbings and stuff. Good strong snap, and then of course, belt loop built in, so you don't, don't use this as a belt loop because this has the potential to unsnap, but built in belt loop. Let's see, there we go. Wow. Now, they have had some uh, crenellated crowns before, but man, this one takes self-defense seriously. You could, wow, yeah. You could put the hurt on somebody with that thing. Ow, all right, I'm not gonna do that again. So looking at the basic shape, uh, I like the size, I like the weight. Not bad. And you know what? This one uh, on the tail cap here also has some guards to prevent it from going off by accident. You can probably also use that um, on the, you know, backhand, we'll say. Uh, really like the size and weight of this thing. The clip can move, yeah. So right now it's indexed so that it's 180 away from the switch, which is cool. The switch also has a little bump in it to help you find it. But I always like to, you know, I always say I like to position my clips 180 degrees against the switch because in the dark it's a really easy way to find it. Give you some size comparisons against um, some of its Olight brothers slash cousins. Here it is against the M2R Warrior, the original model. Here it is against my favorite M1X Striker. So very similar size, uh, a little bulkier, just just a little bit more than the M2R. Um, you can see the difference between the M1X. This is the Seeker 2 Pro, so a little slimmer there. And then just to mix it up, here's the uh, the M1T Raider Plus. So you've got quite a bit more to hold on to there. So it fits pretty nicely into the lineup, you know, among similar type lights, just to give you a comparison. My personal favorite Olight always has been the M1X, ever since I got it, um, has, some of the same features, uh, some very different features, but in terms of self-defense use, it's got that very, very distinct crown there. Uh, this one has two button operation. This one also has two button operation, a little bit different than this one, which we'll take a look at. But I love the size and feel of the M2R Pro. Um, little bit more weight, but also a little bit more real estate to hold on to. Um, it is about the same size though. But it also has the cool light blue accents there. I really like this crown there. So, um, as usual, we're gonna have to 
I think. I think I saw this on the instructions. Well, always. Oh, like protects your batteries with one of these guys. So let's see what kind of battery we got there. 21700, 5000 milliamp hour battery. In the little accessory box, we've got the instructions, of course. We've got a lanyard. We've got the magnetic charging system, which I love so much. Just goes right on, and you've got, bam, charging. Um, never have to mess with the battery. Never have to fumble with plugging anything in. It's so convenient. It works so well. They have magnetic charging docks that it works with. Love it to death. We've got an LED battery indicator. I'll let you take a look at that rather than hearing me babble about it. Okay, that's always useful to have. So your turbo mode, 1800 lumens will stay lit for four and a half minutes, then we'll automatically tune it down to uh, high mode to 750 lumens. Save heat, these things do get hot. Save your battery, you can always put it back up. A lot of these uh, flashlights have that kind of feature. It has your moonlight mode at one lumen. Which, you know, at first I, I saw a flashlight, I was like, one lumen, what good is that? But when you're actually in the dark, sometimes one lumen is all you need. And I use that a lot. Saves your night vision a little bit. Saves your battery a lot. So it's pretty useful. And then 1560, 250 lumens for various things. And then, of course, you've got a strobe mode, which you can use with your <laughs> crown. Um, but let's see. So the instructions say... Before we use it for the first time, please charge it up fully. So I'm just curious. I want to know what it's at out of the box. And it's already at green LED indication. But, you know, that changes depending on what mode you're at. Let's talk about the different modes that this light operates in. So we've got moonlight, which is your one lumen. And then we've talked about the other modes from low, what they call medium one, medium two, high, turbo and then strobe you tap on this back cap right here you're going to go straight to high press it you know for uh, press it real quick and it's just going to go on let it go and it turns off um, hold it down and let it go and that's like kind of your your intermittent so if you just want to hold it for a second and then have it turn off right away that's it um, and you have that, you know, if you're holding it with a firearm or just whatever in a self-defense type mode, you have that ability if you want. The actual modes are controlled by the side switch. So let's start with moonlight. Like a lot of other O-lights, uh, moonlight and turbo are not accessible through the regular modes, through the regular selector switch. So to get to moonlight, you hold it from an off position, hold it down for over a second, and you go in moonlight. And you can barely see moonlight right now but we'll see it better it's on i'm shining it right at the camera there you go uh you'll that's that one lumen you'll see it better when we're outside click it again to turn it off or you could cycle through your other modes to turn it on in general just click it on uh, and it will remember what mode you're in last so since we were in moonlight last you know and it's got the memory it's going to go there but hold it on to cycle through your modes and it'll go to that low, not moonlight again. So here at low, we're at 15 lumens. We go to 60 lumens for medium two, 250 lumens for medium one, 750 lumens for high, and then back down to low. Now here's your brightness warning because we're gonna take it to turbo. To go to turbo, you double click. Wow, that's bright. Okay, so there's 1800 lumens. And we click again to turn it off. You can go right to bright from off by double clicking. And we're in the 1800 lumens again. Now, if we hold the switch down to change, it's gonna cycle through. And then back to, here comes uh, turbo, 1800. Here's your strobe warning. Like most other Rolite products, triple click to get to strobe. And then hold it down to switch. Um, there's no memory recall for turbo or for the strobe. So if you turn it off at turbo or strobe, you're just going to go back to one of the other regular modes. With the tail cap, I forgot to mention this. With a half press, so we turn it on. 
And with a half press, you should be able to get to medium. Full press, you get to high. So, you know, I'm curious. Let's try something. Let's uh, turn it on with the tail cap and then, yeah, we can. We can change the modes. Whoa. That did something entirely unexpected. Turn it on with the tail cap. Look at that. That was not in the instructions. And I realize now that I was a little incorrect with the tail cap. It's going to give you, I believe, high and uh, turbo. High with the um, half click and turbo with the full click. Had I read far enough through the instructions, I would have known that. Um, I was just, I was used to other ones. Yeah, I made bad assumptions. But it also says there's two configurations possible. So that was factory default setting one, half press for medium, hard for turbo. We could also configure it for a half press for turbo and a hard press for strobe. The final feature we got to talk about is the lockout. Lockout is very useful if you're gonna be keeping it in the pocket. So when the flashlight is off, press and hold the side switch for about two seconds to access the button lockout. It'll enter moonlight mode first and then switch to uh, to signal switch off to signal lockout mode. If you want to turn it back on, you just press this down for over one second again, and you go into moonlight mode, and you're not locked out anymore. So I guess the only thing left really is to take this thing outside once the sun is fully down and it's dark out, and we see how well it works. Love the grip on it. Lots of texturing to really hold your hand in place there whether it's wet, whether you're wearing gloves, um, lots of different good ways to landmark your handhold. Uh, I have even have the clip off right now, but there's just, it's very easy to find where the button goes based on lots of different features and textures and everything, so. Cool, all right, so. We're going to go outside when it's a little bit darker. We're going to do our, our standard flashlight testing and uh, see how this thing performs. I have high hopes. All right, I am going to skip the glow-in-the-dark material test that I used to do. If you're familiar with uh, my flashlight videos, I've gotten feedback that people just they don't find it productive. And you know what? Why waste the time? So we won't be doing that anymore. But what we are still doing... Um, so. I've got this wooded property. I've got some haunted red sheds. I don't know. Maybe they're haunted. Maybe they're not. I can only hope. I have some fire tack and some vessel VSSL reflective trail markers. I swear to God, there's a UFO coming for me right now. Okay. Um, measured 100 feet from where the camera is right now on one of the red sheds. I also have a trekking pole at 50 feet, a little offset to the right with um, the fire tack reflective uh, trail markers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna test out the light. We're gonna see how it does. We're gonna see the field of regard, the quality of light. We're gonna see how it hits those reflective markers, all that fun stuff. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this thing up in the moonlight mode. And so you can't see nothing, nothing at all. So I'm gonna pan the camera down a little bit. So here is, here's one lumen. Here's my can hand in front of the camera a little bit. Um, and as I move, I'm, I have the light right next to the camera. So as I move up, you'll see that very quickly we lose that, that light into nothingness. And naked eye, I can barely make out those trail markers. I can't see it at all on the video screen. I don't know what's coming up on camera, but I mean, it looks haunted and spooky out there. So there's one lumen. Okay. Very... Good for night vision, good for right in front of your face, not good for anything else. Good for not tripping on stuff as you're finding a place to peer poop while you're camping. Uh, let's go to um, low mode. All right, now, there you can see a little bit in front of the camera. Now you can see in center frame there, just a little bit of those reflective trail markers out the 100 foot range. So at 100 feet, low is given us, um, and let me move it so it's right on top of the camera too. So we're, we're getting some good light throw on low. There, I'm tilting it just a little bit. You can see pretty good reflectivity at 50 feet. Okay. Um, as, I, as I pan at 45 degrees, 
left and right though of the camera, we kind of lose all of our field of regard. So very directional on low power. Let's move it up. Okay, now we're actually seeing the outlines of the sheds a little bit. Now I'd say that this mode right here, this is this is more than good enough for whatever you're doing at night. Nice wide beam, but still pretty directional. You can see great reflection off the trail markers. Awesome at 50 feet, pretty good at 100 feet. And this is high power. Excellent. This is 45 degrees off. You can see a little bit down here. Remember, I'm zoomed in too, so close in view. You know what, I'll just give you the close in view. There you go, close in view at 45 degrees. Close in view at 45 degrees, pretty good. And back to low, okay. So it's gonna be bright, I'm gonna go to turbo. This is your turbo mode, I can see clear off into the woods. At 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, we're still getting reflection off those trail markers with just the peripherals, but when I shine right on them, um, naked eye, I can see the reflection really well. I'm afraid it's going to get a little whited out on the camera, but awesome. Okay. And I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to go to strobe. So here's your strobe warning. Very fast strobe. And from where I'm sitting behind, it's not really giving me a headache or anything. I'm sure if I was looking straight at it though, I would not like it. Oops, sorry. I would not like it at all. So, very nice. Uh, very clear, very easy to see. Um, LED indicator there. Pretty good performance. All right, so with the bundle package, that is, well, some of one of the bundles, a couple of bundles, whatever, we'll, we'll go over them all at the end. Uh, this light is, like I said, designed to be handheld or mounted. Mounted on what? <gasps> Don't tell YouTube what it goes mounted on. So this is the uh, E-WM25. This is compatible with any flashlight with a body diameter of 24.4 millimeters, 24.4. Um, to 27.4. The examples that they give you on this box are the M20SX, M2X, M22, M2R, M2T, M23, M3, XS, UT, and the Warrior X. So lots of different ones. Um, it's just kind of a universal flashlight mount. So you might even get this to work on some non Olight flashlights. But pull that ring out so it can't accidentally open. And this will open your, your mount. It's all spring-loaded, um, so. Squeeze that and, you know, get it to wherever you want to mount it, midway. Um, And then mount this on whatever rail you want and pull this out and start twisting it again. It looks like it's a lot of work. It's really not that much work. And when this uh, is ready, it'll hold it right in there. A little awkward, I would say, on a handgun, but on a rifle, um, fits pretty nice. Now, 6.3 ounces, um, you're gonna have a little bit of weight off the center line but you can easily mount it vertically uh, on a side rail or something, and that's not too bad. Um, you could also, I'm just saying, handhold this and give you sort of a follow through wherever it is that you're holding it. Um, it's an interesting little, little rig. Um, and you still have, you know, the full tail cap and regular button functionality on it. Unless you choose to use this guy right here. That's the RX-07 magnetic remote switch.
Now this is pretty cool. I, I think we, we've seen this once before um, and I demonstrated it. This is an awesome pressure pad switch and it doesn't need to permanently connect to the light at all. So it's your standard little pressure pad, right? This soft polymer here can connect to your rail wherever you want and you can mount your pressure pad in it. So you can do it a number of ways. You can, you know, do the more traditional Velcroing this somewhere or you can put this and it mounts very easily. It just kind of snaps into place. And then the pressure pad, sorry, this magnet's pretty strong. The pressure pad snaps into place there. And then, depending on where you chose to mount this, um, and I mean, it can go anywhere. So just for simplicity's sake, we'll put it right up there. We'll see if this video gets me kicked off of YouTube now. They've already removed one Olight video I did simply because I showed that the accessory mounts. So let's see uh, what happens here. Okay, and that's not going anywhere. Now you can remove the lanyard if you want, but then the magnetic tail cap switch goes right there and you can set this mode up to be whatever you want. If you hold it down and then let go, it gives you momentary if you just click it, you've got your light on. And it's a great setup. So like I said, you, you know, on the box, you can fit a number of lights in here. Um, this only works if you've got, you know, an old light with a, a magnetic tail cap. And um, the light level is really determined by what the tail cap does. If you're looking for this to mount on whatever, awesome bundle to get your hands on with everything else. And we'll like, talk about prices towards the end. Also comes with a couple zip ties to fasten your cord down, but you can do that however you're comfortable with. Pretty impressive performance from this guy right here. Now I wanna get this clip back on, which I took off when we were uh, demonstrating the mounting equipment there. Um, and I forgot to put it back on until right now. Uh, it's it's a good I mean it's I'd say that this goes more into the tactical area of Olight than the EDC than the outdoors you know um, from the crenulated top there crown um, I don't know what I called it before but I don't think I said it right you know for that potential jabby jabby um, to being made to work with the mount and the pressure pad and everything. You know, this is definitely uh, intended to, to fill. Of course, you could use it for any general outdoors camping emergency use, but you can see where their where they're thinking is for this. Um, I think it's just a great, uh, good powered, um, you know, light for whether you want to use it. Self-defense, the big T word, um, EDC, it is a bit big for EDC, but I mean, it, it's it's got it in there. Um, lots of battery life, lots of options. I love the weight on it. I know I'm one of those weird people that likes a little bit of weight in things. You know, I don't like things super light, but I think that this, uh, this has a lot of potential, especially with all the accessories that you can get for it. So in the video description, there is, um, you know, the, the website, the link for the website with the release. The sale info, the bundle info, all that stuff that Olight gave me to give to you guys. You can check that out. Um, you know, with most Olight products, yeah, there's a, there's a price tag attached to it, but you're you're paying for quality. You're paying for the kind of thing that you have to buy once and not replace, as opposed to buying a cheaper item that is eventually going to wear out, break, whatever, and you know you're going to have to buy more than one of them or you know, fix it or whatever else. So I'm always in favor of paying a higher price once for a good quality item, but I've never, you know, I've never been dissatisfied with an Olight product. That's why whenever there's a new one to show you guys, I, I always make the time to do it. So uh, your thoughts, guys, what do you think? Um, yes, I do listen to your opinions. You don't like to see the glow in the dark stuff on the flashlight test. Uh, what else do you have? You guys have other tests you'd like to see me do when it comes to flashlight stuff? I have 
um, Sofern sent me a dive light to test out, and I'm, I'm just trying to find a good way to do a dive light test that's practical and realistic for you. You know, so if you guys got ideas, let me know. But uh, the M2R Pro, definitely, um, definitely a nice, heavier weight, more T-word option um, for those of you guys looking for that. So check the link, see what you think. Uh, definitely let us know in the comments what you think. And uh, also there's a link in the video description to a video on this little guy released same day. Uh, this is Olight's, uh, it's a little mini keychain UV light. And I have, uh, I, I don't know, I, I went on a rant about visible light spectrum, UV, and all sorts of stuff in the video, because you know what I do, but a couple different ideas on how you can make practical use of UV light and some other things. Uh, these guys are being rela released on the same day, on the 31st, not together, separate things, but I like this. The, I had a lot of fun with this, but anyway. Um, all right. So remember, you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will be back again real soon.